Hi, welcome back to the Ruckus Feature Explainer Series. Uh, today we're going to look at how to recover a Ruckus ICX from a failed upgrade. So let's say someone has tried to upgrade uh, from you know 8061 straight to 8090 and they didn't bother to read the release notes and they just did the, the just the code without doing the boot code and without doing a manifest and reloaded and you've got yourself into a uh, into a rolling reload, right? So basically you've turned it into a brick. Um, so, you know, one way to do this is to RMA the switch, but the best way you can do it is just to do it yourself. It's not that big of a deal, just requires a few things. So what we're going to do is we're going to boot into boot monitor, um, and then we are going to install new code from that boot monitor and then, uh, and then boot up into the proper boot, boot code. So in order to make that happen, what we're going to need is we need a console cable. You have to be consoled in. You can't tell net or SSH because the switch is not booted up yet. Uh, you're going to need some sort of terminal client, you know, hyper terminal, secure CRT terminal on, on, uh, on Unix, whatever the case. You're going to need a TFTP server, uh, preferably on the same subnet. Um, so on your laptop, if you want to plug directly into the out of band uh, ethernet port, that's great. Um, you're going to need the necessary boot code. So the boot code you should have loaded in the first place when you were, or whoever upgraded that code. And you're going to need a static IP. So there's no DHCP client in the boot monitor. You're going to assign a static. Okay. So let's hop over to our terminal and we'll see. So here we are on our terminal. Uh, this is secure CRT, but it doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, console, I'm on the console. Console's always 9,600. 8919 in our case. Um, so I'm going to power up the switch plugged into the console. And then uh, first thing I'm going to do is hit B right away. So it's going to drop me into the boot monitor prompt. So you see I'm at ICX 7150 boot. So this is not a full version of software by any means, right? This is just enough to get the system up and running, um, go through the diagnostics and then boot the real uh, code after that. Um, so in this case, it's from here, this bootloader that I need to fix, right? So um, the first thing I'm going to do is do a print ENV or print environment. And it's going to show me what my environment settings are, right? So um, this is for purposes of, you know, installing in the factory um, or for recovery. We see that it's assigned a static IP address of 172.21.25.199. The TFTP server address it's assigned is 172.21.7.249. It's got a net mask of 255.255.00. Here's the name of the U-boot file, right? And here's the image uh, name that it's that it's going to boot. So depending on what you do next, it would boot a different one. So what we're going to do is we are going to assign a new IP address, um, a new net mask, uh, server IP and then a new file name to boot and uh, and hopefully it will load the correct code and we can reboot into the proper code and and unbrick the switch okay so the way you're going to do that is with the set command so you're going to set um, set environment variables right so we're going to use a set or technically set env so i'll do it properly um, and then it's IPADDR. So exactly the way you see them here is the way they're going to type, be typed in, not with the equal sign though. So one, some two sixteen one dot one sixty seven. We will set uh, ENV for our net mask, which is going to be two five five dot two five five dot two five five dot zero. We will set ENV uh, with our server IP to be 192.168.1.33. Um, we will next set our U-boot file name. So this is, U-boot is, is the, the boot code, right? So when you download the code, um, you will see under each particular hardware type, so under 7150 in this case directory, you're gonna see a boot directory and then you'll see the correct code in there. So we're gonna set ENV uh, for a U boot of MNZ one zero one one five dot bin in this case, which would be the corresponding code to go with eight zero nine zero A. So we will set it to that. 
Okay, uh, I could change the image name if I was trying to trying to boot an image name, but in this case, I'm just trying to load new boot code, the proper boot code to go with our software. So again, if we print env, uh, we can see our new settings, right? So uh, 192.168.1.167, uh, 1.33 is our is our TFTP server. Our net mask is a slash um, slash uh, 24. Uh, and then um, our, our new file name, mnz10115.bin, okay? So we've got those, we'll save env, right? To save those after the switch reloads, okay? And then um, the next thing we wanna do, if I do a question mark here and look at the available commands, uh, what we're gonna do is the um, update uboot here, right? So. Uh, all I have to do is type this update u boot command, and it's going to get whatever that file name is that we set in the previous command, um, and load it into the into the flash. So we'll go update underscore u boot, and it will now uh, copy that file over. So you see it loading the the, the file, um, the file transferred OK. So it now copies the u boot image to flash. Okay, so TFTP to flash done. So, um, so we now should have the correct code um, loaded into the boot code, and so now it's going to um, stop that rolling reload. So, in this case, I'm actually going to power cycle the box by pulling the uh, pulling the plug and plugging it back in. Um, one thing I I may not have mentioned before was you should be plugged into the out of band management port, right? Um, when you're doing anything from uh, from U-boot, so you should be plugged into that out of band, which is where your TFTP server should be connected, or at least connected into the network there. Um, so if we power cycle that box, it's now going to boot up. So right away we see it coming up on bootloader uh, 10, 1, 15, uh, T225 is just the hardware revision. So we see it coming up on that bootloader right away. So it should now boot. It'll boot into uh, 8090A correctly, um, upgrade the firmware, etc. And then, you know, going forward with 8090 uh, and, and beyond, there's going to be only the UFI or the unifer, unified firmware image. So that's a separate video on how to get there. But um, the next thing you should do is, is load that UFI uh, and reboot one more time for 8090. That's not true for previous releases. It was an option for 8080, but in 8090 and forward, it's uh, UFI only. But that's it. So that's how to unbrick your, uh, your failed boot code attempt. All right. So thanks for joining. We'll see you next time and have a great day. Take care.